hard to believe a month has passed since we brought you Kate's GPT, the first combination of Kubernetes and AI in a meaningful way that's not just generating YAML, right? Or throwing everything into an LLM. Instead, what we're doing is we're crystallizing SRE knowledge into Golang and using AI to pass those complex error messages so you can feel more in control. Today, I'm showing you the evolution of that product into Kate's GPT operator, where this can now run 24 seven in your cluster, giving you observability data so that your ITSM can alert you when something has gone wrong. This is truly the 24 seven SRE that you've always been looking for. Let's start with a recap of the project. So Kate's GPT began its life out as a set of Golang tools to help SREs to reproduce and debug triage issues, right? moving away from the tribal knowledge of sysadmins and actually starting to codify something that could be tested. With the influx of new AI inference API endpoints available, it became a really good inflection point to start leveraging those and say, well, let's try and take some of those error messages and really significantly simplify them. So I can glad to say that within the, in the past four weeks or so, we've gone up to almost two and a half thousand stars on the project. We've had a bunch of contributors, I think well over 30. And we have people from around the world who are using this, already two people in production at rather large household name companies. And I think the key to that is that it's open source. We're applying as a CNCF sandbox project. There's no company behind this. There's no revenue that we're trying to generate behind this. We are all just passionate individuals who have come from different walks of life, whether we've been SREs, DevOps engineers, or security engineers. We want to build something for everyone that gets them into Kubernetes, but also gets them into AI. And I'll talk a bit more about that later on. So again, as a recap, go grab the CLI, play around with it in your own clusters, and let us know what you think. We have a bunch of different installation methods because we want to make this as simple as possible. That is effectively our mission statement, right? It's giving people superpowers. And if you haven't checked out our website, please do take a look and give us some feedback uh, on what we're doing. We'd love to hear it. So what am I going to talk to you about today? Well, I'm talking to you about another project today, which spawned from KHGPT, and that is the operator, because it's great to be able to install KHGPT uh, into your computer and run it intermittently. But what about if you actually want to run this continuously? Well, that's where we need something like an operator to run inside of Kubernetes and to be able to integrate with our observability systems. So if you go to github.com, kgpt ai kgpt operator you'll see that we've got a new project that's up and coming that effectively lets you add a Helm chart that will provision an operator inside your cluster. I'm gonna show you how we do that all today and show you some of the cool things that you can do with linking it up to your observability. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is to grab the Helm chart. So we're going to add the repository and update the repo. Once we've got that, then we can install our release. I'm adding a few additional sets on here so that we can get the service monitor for Prometheus and we can get the Grafana dashboard enabled. Once we've done that, if we take a look, we can see that the KHGPT operator has been deployed, but we don't have any KHGPT resources. These are the resources that are gonna create the deployment that does your scanning and your monitoring within your cluster. Before we deploy the KHGPT, what we need to do is to install the secret. I've created this as a dry run because I already have a secret in my cluster. But what you can see is that I am using my Azure API key. And then what I'm doing is I'm installing that as a secret into the cluster. When you have your secret, so that will be your inference API remote credential. That could be for open API, it could be for Azure, it could be for BARD. Then what you're gonna to want to do is to install the configuration object. So I'm just gonna walk you through this before we install it. What you can see here is that we're selecting the model. We're also selecting the base URL, and this is an Azure specific component, and the backend. If you're using a local API or open API, you don't have to do those two steps. In fact, you can have a slightly simpler experience. But in this case, I wanted to show you Azure, so I'm also selecting the engine. These are set inside your Azure OpenAI Studio, and that's completely up to you to do. Once I've done that, I can create this. And what you'll see is that within a few seconds, if we look at our KHGPT pods, we now have a freshly provisioned deployment. And that deployment is going to look at the version of KHGPT to deploy and upgrade. This makes the story for upgrading your KHGPT in cluster really easy. You just edit the version in here when a new release comes out and you automatically then get an updated deployment with all the new analyzers and features. Let's go back and take a look at our pods. The deployment is now running. 
what you'll see is that it's spinning up its metrics and API. The API is a gRPC API that connects to this controller manager. And within a few seconds, what will happen is that you'll start to get results. These results um, have been created and updated, means that they are persistent results in my cluster. And these are issues that will be picked up by the HTTPT API and can, are available for you to triage. Let's just make sure that we can see this really working, right? So I'm going to take something like my beta deployment, which is just a, a little ping check, and I'm going to scale down its memory limits and requests to one meg, so it won't even start. And this is going to be something that's going to give us an out of memory, and that will show up pretty quickly within KHGPT. Whilst we're waiting for that to all update and waiting for the results to update, which will occur pretty quickly, I want to draw your attention to the service monitor that we made. And there's a reason for that. So let's go and take a look at Grafana. What we should see is that we have firstly a service monitor for Prometheus for scraping. We can have we have our right there, which is the KHGPT manager metrics monitor. And we're also getting a config map created for KHGPT. This is the KHGPT overview config map. So those are the two settings that I enabled in the back end. You can also see now that we have additional results that have just been created nine seconds ago. So it's detected some issues. So I'm going to go over to my Grafana and we're going to take a look at those. So I'm port forwarding Grafana and we're going to take a look at what's going on. So we go to our Chrome here and what we're going to do is we're going to put in our local host. So local host 3000. You can see the KHGPT overview is coming up as a dashboard. And we want to set this to the last couple of minutes. So what you can see is that the analysis results have jumped up in the past few minutes, and that we're also seeing some statistics uh, coming back from the operator itself about the queue and the reconciliation counts. You can also see the types of results. I can scale back because I've been running this for a bit of time, and I'll be able to see that over time, my cluster has had different result types that have come up, and these analysis results um, are showing that there are issues inside my cluster. And so we're really proving out that KHGPT's AI component plus its SRE codifiers are valuable in the sense that they're giving you contextual warnings that you can't just find through reading a Prometheus metric that hasn't been generated by this. And so we're really closing the loop here and helping people to be able to actually use KHGPT operator continuously. Because really the next step here is to combine it with your ITSM, right? It's to actually be able to tell somebody on call, hey, something's changed in the cluster. We've detected that this service endpoint has gone stale. We've detected this PVC is detached. And those are all analyzers that are built into the CLI as well. Thank you for joining on this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching how to deploy out KHGPT operator with an Azure OpenAI backend. As you can see, it's super easy to start getting value out of it immediately. And I'm sure you've got a bunch of creative ideas of how you could use this and maybe you could even contribute your own analyzers into the project. Remember, what we're doing at this point in time is we are effectively creating an observability signal generator by giving it contextual analysis data. We're going to take that further through to actually eventually model training and building task oriented models for Kubernetes. It's a real journey, but I'm excited to the direction of the project and how we're starting to cautiously but enthusiastically use AI in the future. Thank you very much.